So in this talk, I'm going to give an example of a function of two variables, which is separately continuous. It's continuous with respect to each variable individually, everywhere. But there's some point where it's not continuous. Okay? That is, it's not jointly continuous. So it's not continuous in the usual sense of the word at some point. So let me take take an example. Let me take rather the example I'm interested in. And I'll explain what's going on behind that. In a moment. Or in more than a moment. So this is xy over x squared plus y squared when xy is not which is the only point where you have trouble evaluating this? Zero, zero. Zero, zero. Because at any, any other point, the denominator is not zero. And at zero, I just define it as, as zero. Okay. Now, the first claim is that f, as I've written down, is continuous and also separately continuous. Where anything that's continuous is automatically separately continuous. If the condition is continuous at a point, it's separately continuous at a point. So, so f is continuous and hence also separately continuous at all points other than origin. So origin we still don't know. We have to think about it. But at all other points, it's continuous. Why? Because it's a rational function. The way rational functions work is they're continuous whenever the denominator doesn't blow up. Okay? Now, what happens at the origin? Is it continuous in x? So let's think. When, if you are, if you are, let me get the picture here. So, here's the axis. Here's the origin. Continuous in x means if you move along this line, the function is continuous. Continuous in y means if you move along this line, the y-axis, the function is continuous. Now, what does the function look like if you move along the x line? It's just... So, it's just... So, so on the x-axis, so that's y equals 0, What, what do you get? The function that you get here is just the function is that you get by setting y equals 0 is x maps to f of x comma 0, which is what? Well, f of x comma 0, if it's other than the origin, it's just x times 0 over x squared plus 0 squared. That's 0, right? Yes. And at the origin also, it's 0. So it's actually 0 everywhere. So actually this function, when you restrict it to the x-axis, it's a zero function on the entire x-axis. So it's continuous at zero. So f is continuous in x at the origin. Right? That's the definition of being continuous, right? This function should be continuous at x equals zero. What about the y-axis? What about continuous in y? Well, that means you're setting x equals 0, right? You're here. So, actually, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, for uh, the definition of continuity, it means that the limit equals to the point value of, at that point, right? Yeah. So, the here, the well, x approaches 0, we have a limit of 0 over 0. How does that... No, it's not a limit of 0. It's a limit of 0 over... X approaches zero. Right? It's zero over x squared, right? That's just zero. So it's actually, let me just write that down. So this f of x comma zero. So the function is zero everywhere. The actual expression is x times zero over x squared, which is just zero over x squared, which is zero. Here. Oh, but so it's what it's it's, when it's so when x is approaches zero. zero it's, it's not approaching 0 or approaching 0. It's equal to 0 over approaching 0, which is just 0, right? So, so the indeterminate form that you are thinking of is approaching 0 over approaching 0, which is indeterminate. But this is actually just equal to 0 over approaching 0. Okay. So it's just, it's just a function that's actually equal to 0, and you're taking the limit of function that's actually equal to 0. 
Okay, so this function is zero everywhere on this thing. So when you approach to the uh, to the origin, it's still zero, right? So this is not approaching zero or approaching zero. It's equal to zero or approaching zero, which is not an indeterminate term. That's just zero. Okay. Right? Good question. So what is the function now? It's y goes to f of zero comma y. What's that? So when zero x is zero, so that's a zero. Yeah. So it's, it's the same situation as for x. So f is continuous in y. at the origin. So combining these, what can you say? F is Separable. separately continuous. Is this here? Yeah. Separately continuous at the origin. Now it's already separately continuous everywhere else. In fact, it's continuous and hence also separately continuous everywhere else. Right? Mm -hmm. So that means that it's actually separately continuous everywhere. Because it's already separately continuous everywhere else. So now it's also separately continuous at the origin, so it's separately continuous everywhere. But I'm claiming that f is not continuous at the origin. So how can I claim that? Well, that requires a bit of thought. But one way of seeing that, maybe a crude way of seeing that, is you consider what happens when you approach the origin along the y equals x line. So instead of approaching it directly from a horizontal or vertical directions, you're approaching it from a diagonal direction. What's the limit now? So, so now the limit, so, so to calculate the limit now, you're basically just saying limit x approaches 0, f of x comma x, right? And uh, what's this? Well, this is limit x approaches 0. What's it? x squared over 2x squared. Uh, because I'm on the y equals x sign, so x is equal to y. So what's this? 1 half. Which is not equal to the value at 0, right? Because that's 0. So, so this function, it's not continuous along this diagonal line. But if it were a continuous function in the meaning of continuous, continuous as a function, then it would have to actually have to be continuous along every direction of approach. Right? It would actually have to be continuous along, along not just the horizontal and vertical directions, but any diagonal direction, even a curved direction, it would have to be continuous. So therefore, f is not continuous at 0, because it's not continuous along the y equals x line. So here's an example of a function that separately continuous everywhere, it's continuous in each variable everywhere, but there is this point where it's not jointly continuous. Jointly continuous is just saying continuous. So, so when I say continuous, I mean jointly continuous. Okay, let me uh, say quickly, I'll just mention this and you can read more about it if you're interested. But this, in, if you know polar coordinates, this f of x comma y, over here, I just mentioned this. I can write it as a, in terms of r and theta, where you use polar coordinates. Well, what will happen? So it's going to be zero when r is zero, right? That's just saying r is zero means you're at the origin, okay? If r is non-zero, you can just plug in x is r cosine theta. What will y be? r sine theta. So r cosine theta times r sine theta over r squared cosine squared theta plus r squared sine squared theta. Be cosine, theta, sine theta. cosine theta sine theta, which is half sine 2 theta. Okay? So these are just the conditions. Yeah? So it's half sine 2 theta when r is non zero, and it's zero when r is zero. But now, now this actually makes it more intuitive what's happening. When you're approaching along the x-axis or the y-axis, whether positive or negative, theta is a multiple of pi over 2. So 2 theta is a multiple of pi. So sine 2 theta is 0. And that's why when you approach along these four directions, the positive negative x-axis, the positive negative y-axis, the function is 0 along all these directions. And that's why you're getting the limit of 0 
On the other hand, when you approach along y equals x direction, what's theta? This angle. Uh, pi over 2. No, oh, pi, pi over 4. four. So, mm -hmm. true theta is pi over 2. And so, you'll get half of sine pi over 2, which is half. That's why you got half here. And in fact, like what you can see is that on each line through the origin, it's actually a constant function. On each line, it's just that there's a different constant function on different lines. And that's why the limit just depends on the direction. But different directions give you different limits. So, so, so you see that the 2 theta was cleverly done so that both the x and the y direction give you the same answer. If I had just chosen half sine theta, then, then it would work only in one direction and these wouldn't. Now, if I wanted to do like sine 4 theta, then, then what would happen is that all these eight directions would give me the correct limit of zero, but other directions wouldn't. If I chose sine of some other multiple of theta, then a certain number of directions would work fine, would give me the limit of zero, but all the other directions wouldn't. So this raises an interesting question, which will be subject of a subsequent video. If all the linear directions, the lim the function is continuous in all the linear directions, does that mean it's continuous? No. How do you know that? Well, you can have a lot of directions and... So, well, if it's continuous from every straight line direction, would that mean it's continuous as a function? Every straight line? Yeah. So, not just these two or three or four, all of them. Oh, I'm thinking maybe yes. Maybe yes, maybe no. It's not easy to think of this, so we'll see that in the next video. But I think it's yes, am I right? Maybe. See the next video.